These are the stories topping the news. A massive turnout at Contract for Progress rally in Charlestown. St. Lucia stepping up its buy local campaign. And India asks the U.S. to investigate an attack on an Indian man. Good afternoon. Welcome to ZIZ's midday newscast for Friday, the 13th of February. I'm Jason Davis. Now for a look at the news in detail. A massive crowd filled Nevis's capital city of Charlestown on Thursday night for the contract for progress rally. It was a display of oneness on stage as the eight candidates of the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party and three from the Nevis Reformation Party, along with NRP leader, the Honorable Joseph Parry, demonstrated their commitment to the Federation and its people. Thursday night's rally was punctuated with appearances by Jamaican dancehall artist Cecile and local bands New Vibes and The Core featuring Delhi Ranks. Earlier on Thursday, SKNLP's leader, the Right Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas, and NRP's the Honorable Joseph Parry signed the contract for progress. The NRP and SKNLP are asking members of the electorate to support them in the February 16 general elections. The fight against crime in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis received a shot in the arm this week when 34 individuals were sworn in as island constables by Governor General His Excellency Sir Edmund Lawrence. At a ceremony held at the police training complex in Newtown, the People's Employment Program's contribution to law and order was highlighted as six of the new island constables are former PEP participants. Commissioner of Police Dr. Selvin Walwyn advised the new, the new constables that it was important they understood that they had police powers after the Governor General would have signed their instruments of appointment. He also warned them to not let their ego get involved when they're executing their duties. Others graduating as island constables came from the Ross University School of Veterinary Medicine, the Urban Development Corporation, the St. Christopher Air and Seaports Authority, A-plus security from Nevis, the Department of Tourism, and government headquarters. A special sitting of the Nevis High Court was held recently to welcome new resident judge, Her Ladyship the Honorable Justice Lorraine Williams. It followed her appointment by the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. In attendance at the sitting were several dignitaries, including Deputy Governor General His Honor Mr. Eustace John, Premier of Nevis the Honorable Vance Amory, and Deputy Premier the Honorable Mark Brantley. In her opening remarks, Her Ladyship, the Honorable Justice Marlene Carter, said it gave her great pleasure to welcome Justice Lorraine Williams as a permanent member of the bench of the ECSC. Justice Williams pledged to, make, to give her best to make herself worthy of the faith placed in her. Previously, Justice Williams has served in the Nevis High Court in an acting capacity for a year leading up to her appointment. On the regional scene, St. Lucia's Ministry of Commerce has stepped up the Buy Local campaign by organizing a meeting between government procurement officers and the Local Manufacturers Association. According to Cabinet Conclusion No. 833, permanent secretaries in each government ministries are now mandated to update the procurement expenditure on goods and services. of the St. Lucia Manufacturers Association met on Thursday. The objective was to build a relationship between the two entities. The Commerce Minister says the plan is to promote the sale of local products. Emma Hippolyte says the drive to buy local must begin with government. She says the standard of local products rivals that of international suppliers. Therefore, a shift in the mindset of consumers must be encouraged. Our task is to encourage St. Lucians to support our local manufacturers. When we support our local manufacturers, we are supporting the economy, we are supporting employment. And in order for us to drive that message home, we believe as a government that we should lead the way. President of Barron Foods Limited, Ronald Ramjatan, supports the government's initiative to increase the purchase of local goods. He says collaboration between SMA and the government procurement officers will propel local businesses. It's that necessary for we to start commence business relationship with all governmental institutions. It's that important. The Ministry of Commerce has invested time, effort and resources in, in promoting the purchase of local goods. The minister is confident that the meeting will boost this local drive. Always remember when you get onto the supermarket shelves, when you consider whether you should purchase a piece of furniture in your home, 
when you determine to buy your chicken, to buy your pork, that you should think local first. Minister Hippolyte says her ministry is collaborating with the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards to ensure that local products meet international standards. Jade Brown, HTS News Force. With foreign goods. So, Guyana is stepping up its security forces as a new batch of soldiers has been commissioned. More in this report. On Wednesday evening, the newly commissioned officers were decorated with their badge of rank by Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, President Donald Romater, at Army Headquarters Camp Angana. They completed the standard officers course and were commanded by Mr. Romater. Your commissioning today is evidence that you possess the leadership skills physical fitness, mental agility, confidence in your decision-making ability, and sense of responsibility and opportunity. For those non-commissioned officers and ranks soon to be placed under your command. The president urged the new soldiers to ensure that they uphold standards of professionalism. For our own country to advance in every direction, your professionalism will be extremely important and I urge you always to remember to be professional. The president said he also expected that the new soldiers would uphold their dignity and integrity at all times. At a ceremony this morning at the office of the president, 15 of the new soldiers were presented with legal instruments certifying them for the position. Internationally, the Indian government has asked the U.S. to investigate reports that police officers in Alabama attacked an Indian grandfather and left him partially paralyzed. The 57-year-old was in the U.S. visiting his son. Al Jazeera's Victoria Gatenby reports. Talk to you real quick. Suresh Bhai Patel is about to meet two officers from the Madison, Alabama Police Department. A dashboard camera in one of the officers' cars records the conversation. What's going on, sir? Do what? And what follows. 57-year-old Patel is tackled to the ground, the incident recorded by a different camera in a second car. Police say they'd received a call about a suspicious person. Patel's son says his father had gone for a walk. Police told him to stop. He stopped and uh, he was telling them um, no English, uh, Indian. And uh, he was uh, telling them in English uh, uh, house number and pointing towards the house. Patel had arrived in Madison two weeks ago to help his son's family care for their 17-month-old child. Audio captures confusion among the officers. Hey, I don't know. He, he, he don't speak a lick of English. When police try lifting Patel, they find he can't stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Patel's lawyers say he was severely injured and required surgery to relieve pressure on his spinal cord. Madison police officers have apologized to Suresh Bhai Patel and arrested an officer on an assault charge. I found that Officer Parker's actions did not meet the high standards and expectations of the Madison City Police Department. For that reason, I sincerely apologize to Mr. Patel. The Indian government has contacted the U.S. State Department to express its concern. Our understanding of the situation is that while there has been some progress in his medical uh, situation, uh, it still is a matter of concern. The U.S. State Department has sent its condolences to Patel's wife in India and to the rest of his family. Patel is suing the city of Madison and the two officers. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera. Two more women have accused Bill Cosby of drugging them decades ago when they met him as young models. One said he sexually assaulted her. Yiming Wu reports. Really is. Linda Brown is one of two more women who have come forward with accusations against Bill Cosby. She says she met the comedian in 1969 and went to his hotel room where he gave her a soft drink that caused her to black out. But when I awakened, I was naked in the bed beside him. I had no idea how my clothes came off or how or why I was in his bed. I was shocked and had no clue as to how I got there or why Mr. Cosby was beside me under the covers. I couldn't move or speak. I felt paralyzed. He flipped me over and sexually assaulted me. I felt like a rag doll 
and like a real-life blow-up doll for him. Lisa Lottie Lublin says Cosby gave her two alcoholic drinks that caused her to feel disoriented. She says she remembers waking up at her home and not knowing how she got there. Bill Cosby made me a victim, but every victim that Bill Cosby assaulted, who has been called a whore and a liar, has helped me to become a survivor. More than a dozen women in recent months have publicly accused Cosby of sexual misconduct. Cosby denies the allegations, many of which go back decades and fall outside the statute of limitations. Shows up right there's no. Coming out of it. Turning to the weather, skies today and tonight will be variably cloudy with widely scattered showers. Winds are east-southeast at 5 to 12 knots, becoming lighter and variable at times. Temperatures will reach a high of 25 degrees Celsius and sunset will be at 6, 12 p.m. And that wraps up the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Join us this evening for these stories and more in detail. Thank you for watching. I'm Jason Davis.